Hello, friends. How are you doing today? It's Mrs. Weedy, and I want to remind you about our story yesterday. Do you remember our story was sad, and it talked about how Jesus had died on the cross? But what did I tell you? I said, there's going to be good news for our next story. So I can't wait to tell you our good news. All right, though, let's start with what we've started with every day. Let's do our absolutely true, absolutely true, absolutely true. Everything the Bible says is absolutely true. Everything in God's word, the Bible is true. Let me see your praying hands and we'll talk to God before we start. Dear God, how we love you. And how we thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And how we thank you for good news that we're going to hear today. So help us now to have our listening ears on and to be good listeners as we hear the story from God's true words. Amen. Well, boys and girls, this story today starts out and it was very early on a Sunday morning. And the sun was just beginning to come up. And there was a group of women that were walking along the road. And they were walking kind of fast. These women were a little bit sad. And they were also a little bit frightened. Because they remembered that just three days earlier, the Lord Jesus had been put on the cross to die. The Lord Jesus' friends asked if they could take Jesus' body and take it over and bury it in a cave called a tomb. And so the women were headed to the tomb. And as they got closer, they began to slow down. They said, what if we won't be allowed to see the Lord Jesus? Because you know what, with the tomb, boys and girls... They had a great big rock, much bigger than Miss Weedy, and they would roll it in front of the tomb so you couldn't get into the tomb. And they said, what if we're not, what if we're not going to be able to get into the tomb? Because we have these jars of spices that we want to take and we want to put them on Jesus's body. Did you know that jars of spice, they smell so good. So if you, if you smelled it, oh, it would smell so wonderful. And they wanted to honor Jesus. And they wanted to be able to put the spices on his body. But there were two things. The, there were soldiers that had been put in front of the tomb to guard it. Because the religious leaders did not want anybody to come and try to take Jesus' body out of the tomb. And then the other thing was, with this great big rock, how in the world could they ever move it? They weren't strong enough to move it, and they didn't know if anybody else would be there to help them move it. And so here they were. They were almost to the tomb, and suddenly the ground began to shake under their feet. Boys and girls, it was an earthquake. The ground was shaking, and as the women rushed over to the tomb, guess what they saw? They saw this great big stone had been rolled away from the tomb and the tomb was open. And then they looked up on top of the stone and guess what was up there? It was an angel of the Lord. God had sent his angel from heaven to roll that great big stone away. Do you know what the Bible tells us about the angel? Miss Weedy just loves this. The Bible tells us that the angel was as bright as lightning. Have you ever been outside at night or looked out the window and it's raining and maybe it's thundering and then you see lightning flash in the sky and do you sometimes have to cover your eyes because it's so bright? This is what the angel looked like. He was that bright. And the Bible also says that his clothes were as white as snow. 
Well, the soldiers weren't even standing in front of the tomb anymore. When the angel came and the earthquake happened and the stone rolled back, the soldiers had fallen back to the ground and they were so frightened that they could not even move. Well, even though the women were also a little bit frightened also, they began to walk closer and closer to the tomb. And as they got closer, they looked up at the angel and the angel spoke to them. Do you know what he said? He said, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, but he is not here. He has risen. He has come back to life. Come and see. Well, the women could not. What? How could this be? Jesus has come back to life? Well, they did. They walked over and they looked around in the tomb. And guess what, boys and girls? It was empty. There was nobody in there. Jesus was not in there. Well, the women were afraid, but they were filled with great joy. They were very excited. And so what they did was they said, you know what? We need to go back and we need to tell our friends and we need to tell the disciples that Jesus is alive. We need to tell them what we saw with our own eyes, how the angel rode back the great big stone and how Jesus was no longer there. And so as they began to hurry back down the road, they were running along and all of a sudden, guess what happened? Somebody was standing in front of them and it wasn't Mrs. Weedy and it wasn't the soldiers. Do you know who it was? It was the Lord Jesus standing right there in front of the women. They were so excited. They were not afraid anymore. They could hardly wait to go tell the disciples. And you know what the women did when they saw Jesus? They fell to the ground and they worshiped him. They knew that Jesus was God's son. That's what we should do, what Mrs. Weedy should do, what you should do. We are, are to worship God and praise him. And so this is what the, the women did. And so Jesus gave them very important work to do. He said, I need you to go tell the disciples to go to Galilee and I will meet them there. Well, don't you know, friends, that when the women told the disciples about Jesus, I'm sure they were just exci as excited as the women were to hear that Jesus was alive. And do you think they kind of wondered, maybe I need to make sure when I get to Galilee that that is Jesus. Maybe they weren't sure that what the, told, the women told them was true. But when they got to Galilee, Jesus came. And oh, they were so thrilled to see him again. They thought Jesus was gone forever. And here God in his mighty power brought Jesus back to life. And Jesus was standing right there in front of them. And of course, you know what the disciples did? They also worshiped God. Because remember, that's what we are all to do. And so Jesus had some important work for the disciples to do. Here's what he told them. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You know what that means? That means Jesus is in charge. Jesus, God and Jesus are always in charge. And he told them, he said, now go and make disciples of every nation. Do you remember a disciple is a follower of Jesus, a person who does what Jesus wants them to do? Well, Jesus was telling them to go tell people everywhere just about Jesus, not tell them just right there. But Jesus was sending his disciples out and he wanted them to go tell the world about Jesus. What an exciting job that Jesus had chosen for the disciples to do. But here's something that was so very special to Mrs. Weedy as I read it in the Bible. Here's what Jesus told them. He said, remember that I am with you 
always to the end of the age. That means forever. Jesus was going to be with his disciples just like he's with us always. And he will be with us forever. Jesus made a promise to the disciples that he would be with them forever. And not only that, later God would send his spirit, his Holy Spirit, to come live in the hearts of the disciples so that they would have the power to go tell people about Jesus. The Holy Spirit helps all of us to be able to tell people about Jesus. And so later on, when Jesus went back to heaven to live with God, the disciples would always remember his promise that he would always be with them. And you know what, boys and girls, anything that Jesus promises he will do, he always does. Anywhere we look in the Bible, if Jesus has said he's going to do something, he does it. Isn't that good news? Isn't that a wonderful story that we got to hear this morning? Okay, I'm going to tell you the verse, but Mrs. Weedy's going to try this, and I don't know how good I'm going to do. So let's give this a shot. I'm going to sing the verse, and maybe that will help you to learn it better. Oh, okay, here goes. I know that God started a good work in me, and he will complete it, Philippians 1.6. Oh, can you do that with me? may take a few times to practice. I know that God started a good work in me, and he will complete it, Philippians 1.6. Remember, God started a good work in his disciples, and he gave them the biggest work to go tell pe people about Jesus, and he has started a good work in us so we can also do the work that he's chosen us to do, that good work that he started in us. Boys and girls, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we have our very last story, and I will see you then.